Hey guys! So, as I told you at the end of the last video, this part of my paper does get into a little bit of the religious stuff and how that has hurt um, the cause and kind of has hurt the cause and pushed the violence forward. I know not all of the Christian community and all of the religious community is like this, but if you feel like that's a huge part of your identity and you feel like that might be hard to stomach, don't watch this video. Don't worry, I won't be upset. I get it. Um, there's things that people say that make me upset, so I'm giving you guys a warning. So now let us begin. Sometimes, however, it is not just what society deems as acceptable. Oftentimes, religion contributes a large factor. The biggest example of this is that of Matthew Shepard and the Baptist faith. Part of this visibility is because of the play The Laramie Project, written about and after Shepard's death. Within the past five years, many high schools have chosen to produce this play as the debate of young Within the past five years, many high schoolers have chosen to produce this play as the debate of homosexual rights have become more prevalent in politics. The play even latches on to the hate that followed at the trials after his death, quoting the former reverend of the Westboro Baptist Church. Just as I was writing this paper, um, the reason I'm saying former um, is because that particular pastor, the reverend, um, had just died. Uh, the play focuses on why religious groups find homosexuality a sin worthy of hate. They claim that the lifestyle is sterile, unprotective, anti-family, and death-driven. A life in the memory of one who no longer lives, the Laramie Project, and the politics of performance, page 86. And that particular quote is actually quoting the play. Um, Matthew Shepard, at only 21 years old, was found beaten and tied to a fence, barely hanging on to life on the outskirts of Laramie a small town in Wyoming. He was a gay student studying at the local university in 1998, and due to the violence and aggression delivered by his two offenders, he died a week later in Colorado Hospital. It is certainly argued that this is what really started the entire world talking about homosexual rights, because this incident was before this kind of abuse was legally considered a hate crime. A study done by Rowett supports these theories. His work says that as orthodox and steady devotion to religion is present, so is the prejudice to activities deemed sinful by the chosen religion, specifically those participating in extremely conservative denominations. His study of undergraduate students showed that religious fundamentalists, Christian orthodoxy, and right and right-wing authoritarians provided the most correlation between beliefs and homophobic attitudes associations between religious personality dimensions and implicit homosexual prejudice, row at page 103. In a recent study done by Fuist, Cooper, and Niss, they examined how largely the 25 most common denominations in the United States affect society's viewpoint on homosexuality. They used what they labeled moral projects to define and associate each denomination's core values and whether they were focused on society or the individual. Secondly, they looked at whether achievement was based on group success or in the individual within these denominations or the success rate of these projects. Fleeced in this, page 67. They found that groups who focus and subsist on authoritarian control are the least favorable towards the homosexual population, mostly based on their religious explanation of what they deem to be societal norms. Homosexuality is not a normal lifestyle and it is abomination in the eyes of God, Southern Baptist Convention, 1998 which is a found, that quote from there is found in Fuist, page 70. In summation, the LGB tros <clears throat> that grow out of denominations with an individualistic orientation towards moral authority and collectivist moral projects are more assertive with their questioning of anti-LGBT scripture interpretations, Fuist, uh, page 79. This seems to be stating that denominations who as a group work on self-improvement who do not rely on authority to control the development have more liberal thinkers and homosexuals in these groups find help when they need it. Therefore, these youth are less likely to turn to violence as a problem solver. Those who blindly follow an authority figure are more likely to turn the leader's belief into their own and either hate themselves for it, sometimes even going as far as to harm themselves first if they are homosexual, or be the target by someone else. So that concludes the um, case and religious example. And the next section is not as hard-hitting or close to home for some of you, I hope. It is a um, 
summary. It's the conclusion of the paper, and it's kind of a summary of the case and the points and really explaining those theories and principles that were mentioned at the beginning and just kind of flushing everything together. So I will see you guys then. Hey guys, so we are returning to the um, It Can Get Better stuff, and we will be looking at the explanation of why